Your hair looks good. Alright. Alright folks. Stumbles and Mumbles here. Stumbles and Mumbles Productions. Stumbles and Mumbles. Yeah. And uh, waited till the last minute like three hikers do. Yep. We gotta catch an Uber to the airport in... 10 minutes, 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. So, once again, we waited till the last moment. Three hikers do well, that. Well, this time we can't be too long like other rest of videos. Yeah, we won't make this one super long. Um, we'll just get into the questions. Let me make one more time. Sure, it's picking up. Yeah, we're all good. All right, the diddles. God. Okay, that's the last one. They get a with moratorium and calling me that silly nickname. Do I get one or two more? I mean, one of them is a question. All right, you get one bediddles a week. One bediddles a week. Okay. Make them count. I'm going to make them count. Shall we start? Let's do it. All right, Mike McCary says, what other three hikes have you done? So I started with the CDT in 2017, and then I jumped on the PCT right after that, 2018. Uh, Pacific Northwest Trail this year. I did 300-ish miles of the AT. Oh, what a trail that was. Uh, the ABT, I've done parts of the West Coast Trail in Canada. I hiked the Juan de Fuca. I hiked the Sunshine Coast Trail. I hiked bits and pieces of the North Coast Trail. Um, and then I've also done a fair amount of stuff in the Laurentians, particularly in Valley of Nord, like the Santé de Philosophie. So what you said sounded gibberish to me, and it's going to sound gibberish to them. I've done some stuff in Quebec. Okay, there we go. So um, we'll, we'll touch on the Deming route on the CBT maybe a little oh. bit later. But uh, that's a story for another time, because we're just trying to get some questions on here real quick. It's a long story. Um, so Mike McCary also asked, did we meet on the Pacific Northwest trail? We did. We did meet. And I uh, initially thought you were a dickhead. Ooh, that's <laughs> so, rough. <laughs> well, it, I was projecting. I was like in my sleeping bag, like kind of late, because it was really cold. And like these yeah. two dudes walked past me. Me and Cy were rocking it at that time. And Constantine just looks over at me and goes, you look warm. I was so cold. And I... Incredibly cold. Yeah, you were sincere about it, but yeah. at the time I was like, who are you judging me for like <laughs> still being in bed? It's cold out. It Damn wasn't it. quite fair, man. I was freezing. It was that. freezing. Oh my god. It was freezing. So that's how we met. Yeah, the yeah. First, first words. You look warm. You look warm. And she has a furnace. I do have a furnace. That was not on the interview questions. No. We can actually touch on that. Well, we can touch on it now. My body yeah. temperature is slightly higher than normal, and so I'm always warm because I grew up in Winnipeg, which is not warm. It is not fair, folks. I freeze. She's she's always staying warm. Okay, that was the, only the first question. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh my god, we got time. We got time. We got time. The flights will wait for us. I mean, we got through like the last day. Yeah, right? yeah. All right, let's go. All right, Lenny hikes. Do you plan to hike other trails? Yeah. Easy enough. <laughs> uh, also, the question: the GDT. Yeah. Or other people might know it as the Great Five Trail. So 800 miles in the Rocky Mountains of Canada. It's like a yeah. northern continuation of the CDT. Yeah, we're going to plan on doing that next year. Next year? We're going to rock it. Oh, yeah. Cool. So how is the AZT different than other hikes? Hmm. I'd actually say it's more similar to other hikes that I've done. Like, it's really a interesting mix of like the Mojave and the, um, the New Mexico desert. What's it called? The Chihuahua desert? It sounds about right. My right. my name recalls not on point like it's that. It's like you're hiking through the CDT on like PCT Great Trend. So that was pretty cool. It was very similar to yeah, it. Yeah. It had a little bit of everything. A little bit of both. Had mountainous regions, had straight desert. Yeah. Good water sources up Kilo. Yeah. My favorite river. Favorite river, yeah. So is the knee fully recovered by the time you finish it? Almost. Yeah. In the last two sections I wasn't wearing a knee brace at all. It was like occasionally hacked up. In, in like deep sand or like on an extended descent, but yeah, it, yeah it's pretty much recovered. Pretty close. Yeah. Very cool. And last question from Lenny Hikes. Um, big blue winter time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I lived in here all winter long last ski season, and I'm going to be living in here all winter long again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big blue van life. She just got a little makeover. Yeah. We'll Congratulations. Oh, yes, we did. Yeah. We'll touch on that. I think there were some more questions coming up about that. Yeah. Like the very nice next part. Question. Mischief on trail. How long, Van Life? How long? Yeah. Uh, a little over a year now. A little over a year? Yeah. Enjoying it. Yeah. Super enjoying it. Yeah. She talks about getting back to Big Blue on trail. Like, like she's all a person. Stuff. Yeah, like, like she's a person. So, um, yeah, to say she's stoked is putting it simply. 
So I think we got more questions about that coming up. Yeah. Um, Mark Cummings asks, how was the AT attacked? I don't want to trash talk the AT. No. Well, I mean, a lot of people love the AT. A lot of people love the AT? I was not in a good mindset for it, however. I, you had a pretty... I was trying to run it out in 80 days. Um, I had stomach flu the first day. I got hailed on on Mount Katahdin. I had a skin infection in my wrist. Oh. That was itchy and horrible. And with my timeline, I couldn't go into town at all. So like, I had to go in and resupply and leave as soon as I was finished resupply. Um, which was lonely and miserable. And I didn't have any cell service. And it's really hard when you finish a trail with somebody that you're used to talking to them every day. And then all of a sudden, I had no contact whatsoever. I touched on that on the Wisconsin Trail. After you leave the crew, it's very yeah, difficult to hike on by yourself. By yourself, Especially yeah. when you get a good connection going and hike well together. So, yeah. it just sounded rough. It was rough. And then and it's a rough trail to begin with anyway, and then you add on all that I mean, stuff. The other thing too is I was going southbound, and everybody that was passing me was northbound, and they were all in these big crews. They all like had hiked you know, 2,000 miles together, and they were all buddy-buddy, and like they didn't really have room for another person, especially one that they wouldn't ever see again. Yep. And, and it's like one thing to feel lonely when you're alone, but when you're really lonely in a room full of people, it's like much, much harder. I was really not in a good headspace for the AT. They're much more difficult. Yeah. And, I mean, we could talk about the AT attempt, all day, pretty much, because there's so many factors that go into anything, right? Well, that was the main problem, though. Yeah, I mean, it's just... I'm, I'm glad that I ended up uh, having, to, having to go to Montreal for a bit and then could come join you on this one. Yeah, you got to rock out the AZT, folks. I'll go back to the AZT sometime. Yeah, I was super happy about it, so... Yeah. That's that. Next um, one. We got five minutes and a whole bunch of questions left. Oh, let's do it. Speed her up. So, Tropics asks a lot of questions. All right, let's just hear them all. Um, where are you from in Canada? Born in Winnipeg, bounced around the country for a while, lived in Montreal, okay. now I live in Pacific. Easy enough. Uh, what did you do after the PMT? Touched on that. At so AT, and then um, my best friend passed away sadly, so I had to go back to Montreal for uh, the funeral, which sucked. Yeah, super fun. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, do you always do high mileage? Pretty much, yep. She was killing it on the CDC. I've heard some stories. Mm. Insane. Um, I do not always do high mileage. Um, my AT journey took me six months and six days. That's, we're not going to touch. You, we're not going to touch in on that. Um, hiking resume. I think we touched, we we touched on one. trail name board. Um, so on the Continental Divide Trail, there are these all these little campgrounds that you start out if you're going southbound, so like Two Medicine and the other one. Starts with an M. Many glaciers. Many glaciers. Anyway, so I was doing sink laundry and all these little trail campgrounds and like stuff kept coming off of my hands and one time I almost packed out like a faucet fixture and the next time I almost packed out like a soap dish that came off of my hand after I was drying clothes on it. So I made a joke that I was collecting shiny objects and that's how I got the name Magpie. You do collect shiny objects? Yeah, I also had turquoise gear at the time which was like Magpie Brothers, so that's really bad to do that. I mean, trail names have many, many more things. They keep built. Once you get the name, it keeps getting more and more. And we'll go to the next question. <laughs> Eating habits on trail. I could probably do a whole video about that one. Let's just skip that for now. We'll, we'll do that video later. Um, cannot read that, so I'm not going to ask that. Um, read my writing? Hiking. Resume in Canada. Oh, we touched on that. Yeah. Um, trails in Canada hike, also touched that. This is a big question also a lot of people have is why hike and that's such a that's yeah. such a big question that also can do a full video on that. There's many reasons behind it. If you read my newsletter I go into my reasons for it a little bit. I like to feel like an animal and I like to be free of the demands of society. Yeah. And I need a lot of exercise and that ADHD is fuck. There's many, many reasons <laughs> that people hike, so pick one, pick many, there's a lot of reasons. I'm um, not saying that flippantly, like I actually have ADHD. <laughs> Can it, okay, I can distract it as well. Yeah. So it works yeah, well. Yeah. How did you get into it? Uh, so I did a cross Canada bike trip. I was a bike messenger in Montreal, and one day I got bored in February or something, and I looked up sort of my daily mileage and how far I would go if I just went in a straight line, and I was like, oh, I could ride all the way across Canada in like two months. Why not? And That's so awesome. 
while I was looking up lightweight equipment to pack on my bike and stuff, I kind of stumbled across a bunch of biking books <coughs> and I got hooked. I started reading blogs while I was doing my bike trip and decided that after that it would be my next project. And just fell in love with it after that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it is quite a thing. It is quite a thing. Um, yeah, the tropics. We're ready for yeah. the next one? Okay. Did we meet randomly? Yeah. Yeah. We did. Quite random. I mean, you hike a trail, run into other hikers. We were the first ones out there, so if we had been deferred in our timing by like a day, I mean, you wouldn't have seen it. We wouldn't have seen it. No. Trail magic and shit is wonderful. Trail provides. Trail provides always. Which uh, did you enjoy more, the PNT or the ACT? Purely from a physical standpoint, the PNT because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't so skinny and tired. Um, they're both up there as my favorite trails. I'd say it's hard to choose. They're just very different. Oh, I don't want to say anything bad about the ACT, but I'll go PNT. I think I would do the PNT also, just because it's so spectacular. I I was more on your end, like skinny at the end of the PNT. My body was shutting down. I had crypto. We, we don't need to get into that, so we'll they just know. keep asking. We'll just keep asking that about questions. I mean, they do know, don't they? Yeah, they watch your videos, man. That's true. Okay, Lucinda Turnus, favorite gear, piece of gear. This gear oh, is also such oh, a big. Uh, thing. Definitely my Cedar Summit ultralight pad. Are you a morning person? No. <laughs> I'm a night person. I do not wake up in the morning. I tell them, like, wake me up whenever, because uh, I'm going to be cranky for half an hour regardless. regardless. If it's 4 a.m. or 7, it doesn't matter. I do not like waking up. She's not a morning person. Stumbles and mumbles right there. We're going to keep that in there, but not a morning person. Um, if you could hike backpack anywhere in the world. Well, I think if I could, like, if money was no object, I think I would probably go to the right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that too. And I really want to go to Antarctica, which is not exactly hiking or backpacking, but Ooh, I really want to go to Antarctica. Yeah. yeah. Read her blog. She talks about Antarctica. Antarctica. Actually, I didn't this time, but I might in the next one. There you go. Read yeah. her blog. Um, terror. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't talked about that. Well, right, we don't have time to talk yeah, about I'm it now. Yeah, getting distracted too. Um, base weight? Oh, I don't even know. Like I don't, 11 I don't or 12 know pounds. Either. If you're comfortable with your gear, doesn't. It's not too heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Big three. Uh, so right now I have a tarp tent uh, pro trail for my tent, but I think I may sell it and go for a freestanding tent for the DDT. Um, all right, and my, I have two different sleeping bags that I alternate based on the temperatures of the trail I'll be experiencing. And what are you looking at? I'm just checking time. It's 9.29. Yeah, we're good. Um, we're good time. I got distracted. Oh, I use a Sierra Design Sisu 15 degree that's discontinued, but um, yeah, I bought it a couple years ago. And then I also have a Vanilla sleeping bag that I custom ordered from work because uh, I work at a, a backcountry outfitter that's from France that I use for lighter weight trails. It's a 30 degree. Um, and then my Sea to Summit Ultralight Pad has served me well for like five years of adventures. It does seem like it served you well. Yeah. All right, we might start getting a little faster on these. Oh, that was also from David Green. Um, also, David, David Green, scariest thing happening on a through hike? Um, the time I almost died on Mather Pass was pretty scary. Yes. Uh, we'll tell that story later. But basically, yeah. I got my foot stuck going downhill in ice um, and couldn't figure out how to free myself. Not fun, folks. Not fun. I almost broke my ankle. Adam in Tucson. Simple tips, guidance for a first time through hiker. That's a whole video. That's a whole video. Just don't, get, a, just don't get out there. Don't pack your fears. Don't eat only garbage. Um, invest in a high quality pack and a high quality sleeping bag if you're going to spend money on things. And yeah. test out your shoes before you go. Start walking. Yeah. Start walking. You'll figure it out when you get out there. Don't pick a super popular trail first. That would be my main tip. Unless you want the hiking culture. I think it, I think it gives people bad habits. It does. Yeah. Um, hike something shorter or less popular first. Maybe even the AZT. Honestly, yeah. It would be a really yeah, good start trail. That's a good breakdown there. Yeah. All right, so now we get into the best portion of the portion of the interview, Constantine questions. Um, we'll just start off with an easy one here. So preference-wise, hand sanitizer or dirt cleaner? Hand sanitizer, if you rub your hands in dirt, mm -hmm. it does not clean your hands itself. We have diff different views here. We had you a long debate about this, about how he's not allowed to cuddle me until he uses hand sanitizer on his hands instead of rubbing them in dirt. I mean, the dirt... You it's not necessary. It's not necessarily dirty. It's clean. Do you know what's in dirt? Rocks that scrub your hands. Poop. You know what's in hand sanitizer? Alcohol. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing, but 
another debate we'll get into later. <laughs> um, I'm a dirt preference guy, so let's see. How many cows per day is too many? More than two cow herding counters is too many cow herding That's just not true. That's just right, not true. Right, right. I mean, we'll, we'll listen to her, but that's just not true, folks. I can get into cows as well. Yeah. Favorite cow set? Oh, the lawnmower cow. Uh, yes. Yeah, that we saw two days ago. They were pretty cute. They were cool. Yeah. If I saw a cow every day, I'd be happy. Uh, awesome. Ups or downs? Downs. Downs? Downs. Okay. Technique, ritual for town, if you have a technique. Uh, my technique for town is like breakfast, yes. shower, yes. Uh, complain, <laughs> uh, procrastinate. Of course, of course. I mean, we procrastinated this video right here. Uh, yeah, we did. Um, eat more stuff. Oh, yeah. Procrastinate. Oh, yeah. Uh, make fun of Constantine. I mean, that's just given. Resupply at the very last possible minute. Mm -hmm. um, and then forget to eat lunch on the way. We forgot midnight lunch, but that's also another. There, yeah, wake up at midnight and eat some more. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tuna juice or no tuna juice? Oh. Well, tuna juice the band, or fake band tuna juice, good. Oh, Actual tuna juice, bad. We have an album coming out, just to let you all know. Um, we gotta get our song, song list song, together. Yeah, we got our set list together. We'll, uh, we'll play something for y'all in the future. Length of town chores. It's all day. It's all day. It's all day. It's Procrast really procrastinating all day. is very important. Town chores. You get into town and you feel like you have stuff to do all day. Yeah, this and then you spend the rest of the day flipping through movie channels looking for the thing with Tom Hanks in it. That's true. It's true. That is true. Sorry, I got distracted. I got distracted reading the next question. So, favorite town snacks? Ice cream. Oh yeah. What else do I eat town? Cookies. You eat cookies. But you also eat the cookies when I'm eating the That's cookies. That's true. I'm an opportunist. Donuts. Chicken. Coffee. Chicken. Oh, yeah. Chicken tenders. Fried chicken. chicken. All the way. Give yeah. it to me. Okay. Um, biking trip Canada. I know that's a big thing as well, but we'll just go for length, time, and thoughts. So, 16,000 kilometers, roughly. So, from Montreal to Vancouver Island and then back to Montreal. Um, it took me four months and a little bit, four months, four months, two weeks. Um, so I biked out to some, see some family in Vancouver Island, saw a bunch of friends along the way. I've lived all over the country, so I have people kind of everywhere, um, which was really cool. I got to see everyone. Uh, I hiked parts of the West Coast Trail and the Juan de Fico while I was up there. And then I had like 800 bucks and uh, two months to kill, so I was just like, well, I guess I'll bike back. That's badass. So I did. That's awesome. And it was pretty awesome, um, but it definitely ruined me for city life. Yeah, that's also a whole other story that we can get into. Yeah, my right bike's now. name is the Kraken, by the way. Kraken. Let's do it. Um, best wildlife story. Hmm, getting stalked by wolves in Republic. That is sketchy as hell. That was fucking scary. I did not that like that. That was like probably my second scariest trail experience. Yeah, wolves will get you. Yeah. 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 Well, cross yeah. over that too. Sobo, Nobo, Weibo, or Evo? Sobo. Southbound, yeah. Southbound's I mean, the way to do it. I'm a, I'm a contrarian at heart. At heart. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. What everyone else is doing, I don't want to do that. I'm a no-bo at heart, and it hurts me that I had to go sobo this year, and rebo. And, God, I don't even know what Wisconsin is. Eastbound? It's Wisconsin. I don't know. Um, total miles. I'm not sure. Let me calculate it. I think at the very end. Very close to 10,000. Very close to 10,000. Over this year, I think I have around 8,000. Very close to oh, no, um, Favorite section, any trail? Gila River Canyon on the on the CDT. I mean, I've talked about Brutal. it like three times in my newsletter. Um, love it. Love it. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah, she but goes for the pain. I love the pain. Bring it. Coldest slash hottest times. Any trail? Coldest was definitely ascending Mount Whitney in a hailstorm. So Ooh. I camped at Guitar Lake uh, in a hailstorm. Ew. It's cold. Hottest. Hottest. Oh god, Etna on the PCT. <laughs> oh no. It was 109 Fahrenheit, so that's about 34 degrees Celsius for normal people. Um, and it was so, it was 100% humidity, and it was so sweaty and so damp that my socks could never dry properly, and I was just soaked from head to toe all the time. Um, and my socks got so like gritty and wet that all of the skin on the bottom of my feet slept off. When I took my Whoa. shoes off, they were full of blood, and there was no skin left on the bottom of my feet. It was excruciating. That's gnarly. 
I, I hated it. Yeah, I, yeah. Would, I would not enjoy that. I either. also like found a guy in heat stroke out there and like That's got nice. him into a creek and like made sure he was okay during the same section because it was just ridiculously hot. Broke it down. Yeah. What made you stronger? Well, a little bit of both. It made me sweaty. Made you sweaty. <laughs> That's true. Um, how do you keep your mind occupied when it's monotonous out there? Oh, I listen to audiobooks and podcasts sometimes. I sing makeup songs to myself. I journal quite a bit. Uh, I don't know. Quite a bit. I daydream a lot too. I'm like yeah. kind of a distractible person. That's part of why I like through hiking. Is like. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I totally lost my train of thought. Good job. Yeah, because there's a shiny object over there. Monotony. How do you keep your mind occupied? Oh yeah. One of the things that I like on through hikes is that there's like nowhere specific I have to be really, yeah. and I don't really have to focus on anything unless I'm like focusing on the trail. And so I just daydream a lot. Like I still have really vivid daydreams, like people used to have as a kid, which apparently isn't normal in adults. Um, but creative you know, mind. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, not all trails are going to be wow factor the entire time. No trails. No wow trails wow factor. factor. There's road walks, there's monotonous sections where some days are just like, this is going to be So, there's other ways, yeah, as you heard, yeah. ways to keep your mind occupied. Mm-hmm. Um, we got two questions left. All right. Some, some of the best questions are coming up. So, what I have written down here, just one word with a question mark. Uh-oh. It is bediddles, question mark. I don't know how we come to a diddles question mark? Question mark. We'll just leave it as a question mark. Um, we'll touch on that. We'll talk talk through it a little bit. <laughs> and then it looks like Matt Clay might have added something here. Favorite thing about Constantine? Mm. Or did I selfishly add that question? No, I added that question. Mm. I don't know. Hard to pick. Hard to pick. But you're so nice to people. I like that. Mm. That was a good thing. I make you smarter, you make me nicer. Yeah, oh god damn. She's broken through a lot of a lot of mental blocks in the brain and maybe a lot, lot smarter. I can speak French now. Fully. No, you ne pas pas. Fully. Luan mon vache. Fully spoken, fluent. He means vache, by the way. I don't. Mm. I do. I really miss my cows. You do miss your cows. I do. Alright guys. Alright. That's questions with Magpie. Um, we have to go. We have to go, yeah. It's we getting, have to it's go. Late. Uh, All we right. have to go catch planes, trains, automobiles. Peace out. Peace.